here at 105.5 WDHA on the Morning Joe. Coming up this weekend, it is the first of its kind public event, a 420 Expo, September 16th, 17th, 18th at the NJ Expo Center in Edison. And we've got Dan Davis and Jay Handy on with us. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. So this is the first event, as we said, of its kind. What were some of the challenges that you guys faced putting this together? Well, first, first time events for anything aren't easy. Uh, then you throw into that the wrinkle of this being a bit of a fringe event. Uh, and, you know, there's always a lot more crossing of T's and dotting of I's. Of course, we've, you know, we're no uh, stranger to these fringe events. We've been doing doing them in New Jersey now for 16 years. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just, it's, you got to make sure that everything is done correctly, make sure that, you know, the, the, the laws are all followed, everybody is happy. And at the end of the day, you get to kind of celebrate for three days. Dan, what were some of the challenges that you faced with this? I mean, definitely, you know, it, it's been an interesting thing. You know, we've been planning, you know, we wanted to do this show for about three and a half years now and had to wait until adult use, you know, aka uh, recreational got rolled out in New Jersey. Um, and, you know, once it did on April 21st, you know, it was, you know, all systems go. So for us, it was honestly taking, you know, starting from almost scratch. I mean, we had some of our infrastructure in place, but starting from scratch and usually we'll put together a show. It takes us, you know, pretty much almost a whole year to do it. And this was all systems go in about half of the time. So definitely the time crunch, um, you know, tapping a new market uh, for an exhibitor base and, you know, just some things like that. So that was a little bit of a challenge. And like Jay said, some of the legalities and just making sure we're following all the rules. And of course, you know, attitudes, I think, have changed towards cannabis over a number of years, but especially in New Jersey since uh, since April. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that people still have about cannabis? I mean, we it's we've been conditioned for, as Jay likes to say, our entire lives that it's wrong and it's against the law. And, you know, so for this, it's, you know, basically removing that stigma and reconditioning everything. That's OK. It's the same thing as going to you know, your bar and, you know, having a drink or going to the local package store and picking up a, a six pack. So, you know, that's some of it that it is legal now, <clears throat> excuse me, and that, you know, you can do this and, you know, getting people over that hump. The first ever 420 Expo coming this weekend to the New Jersey Expo Center in Edison. Dan Davis, Jay Handy, my guests this morning here at DHA. Uh, Jay, let me cut to the chase. Can you purchase cannabis at the event? I know a lot of people are going to ask that question. You cannot. Uh, according to state law in New Jersey, uh, and, and honestly, in most states, you think about it, it's like a liquor store. We, we can't, you know, at other shows, have liquor stores pop in and start, you know, selling bottles of Grey Goose. So at the end of the day, uh, there is no cannabis sale, no THC sales uh, on site. However, uh, again, in accordance with New Jersey state law, it is considered a BYOC event. Uh, so uh, consumers are allowed to bring in their own cannabis. Um, there are designated smoking areas outside of the building. There's no smoking or vaping or anything inside. Um, again, the, the legalities and all of the T's crossed and the I's dotted. Uh, people can still come in, consume. Uh, enjoy the show, and uh, but they will not be able to purchase cannabis on site. And Dan, I know you've got a couple of special guests for the event, including wrestler Rob Van Dam, and I guess the patron saint of stoners, if you will, Tommy Chong will be there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we were, you know, putting together this event, Jay and I were sitting there and like, okay, who's on the Mount Rushmore of uh, cannabis? And, you know, and if you're creating a Mount Rushmore of cannabis, I mean, there's obviously some names that pop in there. But obviously, you know, Cheech and Chong are right up at the list. And from everything what we heard was Tommy was just such a approachable, gracious, just really, really cool guy and easy to work with. And, you know, we did everything we can, you know, picked up the phone and, and just, you know, hammered the phones and emails. And we finally got to, you know, Tommy and his people and, you know, they said right on and they were coming <laughs> on and, you know, and also, you know, Rob's like been great also. Uh, Rob is, you know, a, a WWE Hall of Famer. He's had, you know, a 20 year or so um, 
actually probably longer in that career in re- in pro wrestling, but he's been a huge uh, cannabis advocate for that whole time. And I remember during pandemic, as everybody did, just binge watching everything and consuming as much content as possible on TV. There wasn't <laughs> a lot of, especially for trade show producers to do during that time. Um, and I saw a documentary that he did called Headstrong, you know, where he was on a also a comedy tour at the same time he was wrestling. Um, doing stand up and was talking about how cannabis has helped him through concussions and things like that. And, you know, he also has the nickname, Mr. 420. So, um, you know, we reached out to him and, you know, he was another great person to bring in. And, and obviously too, we'll have people that are, you know, well-known th- throughout the cannabis community there. Uh, you know, a gentleman from Jerome Baker, uh, one of the premier, you know, if not the biggest glass blower in, uh, Subsequently, the guy that went to prison with Tommy Chong uh, when they both got popped for mailing paraphernalia through the U.S. Postal Service. Jay, another question I have to ask you, do you have enough food trucks? Oh, man, you know, that was the the first thing that we knew we had to have at this event. And once we started putting together the, the smoking area and then, you know, knowing where we're cordoning off everything outside, the answer to that is yes. Yes, we do. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 food trucks, um, a huge variety. Of course, then we also have the food court inside, and then we also have other various vendor food vendors inside. So yes, the uh, the munchies will be satisfied. <laughs> All the details are on the website at 420expo.com, and that's 420, the numbers, 420expo.com, the first of its kind public event, 420 Expo, September 16th, 17th, 18th, at the New Jersey Expo Center in Edison. Dan Davis, Jay Handy, thank you for joining me this morning here on the DHA Morning Jolton. Best of luck with the event. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jim.